Good Sunday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It has been a busy morning so far, not really too much with the way of showers and thunderstorms or severe weather, none of which we are really expecting to see uh, throughout the rest of the day when it comes to severe weather. So some fairly good news where that's concerned. But the main thing we're looking at for this morning has been seismic activity. About 5.15 this morning, an earthquake happened in northeast Arkansas. While that's not exactly huge, Huge breaking, uh, earth shattering, so to speak, news. We did see again a pretty decent amount of reports from this area, and it was felt in the Memphis metro area as well. So if you felt it, we'll tell you more about how you can participate in citizen science. So find out more about that coming up here in just a little bit, especially if you're in the northeast Arkansas, south southeastern Missouri area, and that will give you a good idea as to how you can help seismologists with more information. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in on Periscope and Twitter for this morning. Again, things are decently quiet for the time being where it comes to anything involving storms, but we do have that potential for some more activity heading our way into the rest of the day. So we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. We'll take a look right now at what's going on in and around the Mid-South area, welcoming in our Facebook viewers for this morning. And again, we are live just past the top of the hour. It's about 8.03 by the time we record this. And again, we are live on Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter to give you an idea as to what's going on on a very busy morning in the Mid-South area. Taking a look on the Germantown City Hall cam from the Weatherbug Network, we've got clouds out across the Mid-South and starting to move in. A beautiful sunrise this morning, no problem about that, but those clouds are going to be, again, making their way into the area and overspreading the Mid-South. And with those clouds you see out there on the horizon, we'll be looking for more chances of rainfall heading on through. I should add, if you've never been here before, if you'd like to contact me about anything on here, austin.onic at WR g.com in the blue bar up there in the cell phone graphic and if you like more information about what the forecast is doing check out more here in the blue bar social media information here and again more information about our forecast at wreg.com slash weather former mayor of olive branch sam reichard welcome to the show this morning and thanks for joining us currently again in the mid-south we've got some showers and some thunderstorms taking place over parts of northeastern Arkansas, mainly just west of I-55, getting some activity from Leechville down to Truman, right around the Bay Area, and into around areas and east of Jonesboro. That's the heaviest line that we have at this time, but spatter, scattered sporadic areas. I really need more coffee this morning. Thanks a lot for, again, a little bit more patience on that for right now. Not much of anything, again, developing in the areas east of the Mississippi River, although we are looking at, again, some scattered showers into and around portions of uh, Tennessee between Covington and Ripley. We've got a couple of showers showing up here, and that's, again, developing ahead of the line. It's not seeing anything in the way of lightning or thunder with this particular area of cell. Nothing going on around the metro area at this time, so, again, Again, good news for anybody traveling for right now, but you probably will be needing the umbrella and the windshield wipers just to be on the safe side. North Mississippi, also blank at this point. Still not seeing anything into around southeast Arkansas, south and east of I-40. But back to around Little Rock, that's where we've seen most of the activity for this morning. And back up into around the Arkansas-Missouri state line, that's where we're seeing, again, the heaviest rainfall. Most of this is going to miss the Mid-South heading up to the northeast of us, but we will see again more chances of scattered showers and thunderstorms possibly developing with this line now just to the west of I-40 in western Mississippi County in Arkansas, and also again approaching Cherry Valley and northern Cross County in Arkansas across much of Poinsett County this morning around Harrisburg. So it could be, again, some wet roadways and maybe enough to mess up your windshield to get the ro roadways a bit wet. So please keep that in mind out there. We're still not expecting anything in the way of severe weather. Uh, we'll show you more about that forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and switch over to, again, the main weather story. Well, the main story of the day for what we've got uh, in this portion of time into and around the area. Uh, this is, again, going to be the story throughout the day. Now, this is, again, nothing really specifically huge. A uh, lot more 
more powerful earthquakes happen in California all the time. But again, this is something that is kind of important to the area because mainly this is the largest earthquake that we have seen in the News Channel 3 viewing area in the last couple of years. Uh, nothing particularly destructive. We've not heard anything in the way of damages, which is very good news. It was a 3.7 reported this morning between Manila, Dell, Victoria, and Black Oak, Arkansas, just to the south of the lakes area right around the Big Lake Wildlife Management Area. And again, not seeing anything to report in the way of damage at this time. The Definitely a good signature showing up on the helicorder system uh, from earlier this morning. It was just about 5.16 in the morning. This is the helicorder system from the University of Memphis area around Lenox in central Memphis. And as you can see, a pretty short, sharp shock, uh, only lasting for less than a minute or so before it really tapered off. And it was, again, not all that strong, but it was strong enough to be felt. That's the important thing on here. And if you'd like to participate in this, the United States Geological Survey and the University of Memphis Center for Earthquake Research and Information would love to have you along for the ride to fill out a Did You Feel It report. If you did, as approximately 417 other people have done so in these areas, reporting by zip code, most of them coming around northeast areas of Mississippi County in Arkansas around Blytheville, which is very close to where the epicenter was. Some of that uh, activity, again, was uh, felt in Shelby County in and around eastern and northern northern Shelby County, Millington, Bartlett, Fraser, back toward Lakeland and Arlington, even down towards South Haven. A little bit of activity there reported in and around Forest City and especially into the Boot Heel of Missouri. It looks like uh, back up into and around the area of Dunklin County, close to around uh, Cardwell, if I'm not mistaken, on that map, if my bifocals aren't lying to me. That's about the heaviest activity we're seeing. Yes, Cardwell, uh, seeing again some heavier intensity reports there. So if you would like to see more about this and how you can fill out the information. All you have to do, uh, Nancy Barnett Cleveland, glad to see the coffee's ready. Information about the New Madrid Fault, you can go to earthquake.usgs.gov or you can go to our webpage at wreg.com slash weather. That'll be our forecast page. If you scroll down beneath the forecast for this morning, you uh, the video forecast from this morning, you'll see this graphic. And this, again, will give you more information. And all you have to do is click on the Did You Feel It link, and that'll give you more information just by clicking on that. It'll take you to that particular earthquake. Whatever you felt out there, fill out the report from the United States Geological Survey. Did you feel it? How intense did you feel it? Were you asleep? Did it wake you up? Did it bother anybody else? Did Was there any damage? Anything like that. This is the type of information that can help seismologists study things like earthquakes. You and your information, you don't have to have a PhD to study science, and you can help study a lot of information here by reporting this information to the Mid-South area. So again, this is a great way to get there. Again, go to our website, wreg.com slash weather. Scroll down beneath the forecast, uh, down beneath where the video forecast is located, and that will get you, again, more information about what's going on and what happened. No other earthquakes have happened at this time uh, in and around the area, so good news on that, at least as far as we know. There may be some swarm earthquakes happening out of this. It's been known to happen, but as of right now, that's the only earthquake that has occurred uh, in this particular area area, so definitely good news that this is a singular so far earthquake, but if something else happens, we will definitely let you know about that. Let's switch over to the tropics and show you more about what's going on. Big story for this morning is, of course, this storm down around Puerto Rico, and not good news for the Puerto Rico area, but the best news at this time, it is moving away from Puerto Rico and the Bahamas, but this could be a possible problem for the east coast of the United States. Uh, the Virginias, the Carolinas, into around the tri-state area, around New York. This could be a bit of a problem. It could be our uh, P storm. We'll see what happens with this one a little bit later on. The big weather story of the day is Ophelia, a Category 1 hurricane for right now, a Category 2 hurricane. It was Category 3 briefly, and as of right now, this storm is going to get picked up by the jet stream and is going to be pushed to the northeast, and it's expected to hit Ireland into tomorrow afternoon with possible uh, tropical storm force winds just below hurricane force winds, and some of that could be going right over Scotland as we head into very early to Tuesday morning. Now, while this is not a major concern for the United States, it is unique in the sense 
that we are seeing this happen at all. This is the strongest hurricane in many years back to the east of the Azores Island, and this is something that rarely happens out there. And for this to go on and hitting Ireland, this is a pretty big thing. Could be again seeing winds of near hurricane intensity by landfall. Uh, not a threat to the United States, but if you're heading to Europe in the next day or so, maybe depending on your route, this could cause again some problems uh, in and to and around the area at this point in time. Uh, Sandra Mead on Facebook, what is the largest magnitude earthquake that occurred closest to the Memphis area, not counting the one that created Real Foot Lake, uh, back into around the 1811-1812 megaquakes that happened in that area. The strongest earthquake that I know about that happened, and I'm just going from memory on this, happened in roughly about the same area, and it was roughly about a 6.0 and I believe that happened somewhere around 1895 or so, somewhere in that area. And that so far uh, since then has been the strongest earthquake that I know about in and around the Mid-South. Very good question on that. Uh, we'll try to answer more of the questions about the forecast in a little bit. Julia Cavallo did not feel anything in Walls, Mississippi. Uh, Sam Riker, nothing felt in Olive Branch. Likewise, in downtown Memphis, I've lived here 20 years, and I still haven't uh, felt anything in the way of an earthquake uh, taking place at this point in time. This is, again, uh, what we'll be talking about for the next day or so, so stay tuned for more on that. Winds primarily out of the south on the preview scan of the enhanced data display, uh, showing those wind markers going out of the south south and west. Temperatures back in the lower to mid 70s. Zooming out to the rest of the area, again, mainly out of the south, but going back to the north, we've got temperatures back into the 50s, even the lower 50s in parts of Missouri. Wind gusts topping 20, even coming close to 30 miles per hour in and around Harrison, Arkansas. The front itself is right around Harrison, Mountain Home, uh, west of West Plains in Missouri, and that's the front that's going to be moving its way toward the mid south within the course of the next several hours. You can see a very clear uh, delineation of the winds out of the south ahead of this front and out of the north behind this. Even temperatures in the 40s in southwest areas of Missouri, southeast Kansas, and northeast Oklahoma. Uh, wind gusts out there topping 20, nearly 30 miles per hour, so that front is going to be heading our way relatively soon. Once that front gets here later on this afternoon, the transition between rain and clearing skies into the evening will be pretty short sharp and pretty well noticed into the evening hours, but we still have that chance of showers and maybe some thunderstorms taking place as we get into early this morning, early this afternoon, and then early into this evening. Most of everything should be leaving the Mid-South, and by tomorrow morning, high pressure sets up, winds out of the north, very much on the cool side, so this is going to be a fairly short-lived system. Once it does move out of here, we've got dry air in place for the next several days. Next chance of rainfall is still well into our future, so we're just not seeing a lot out there. Storm Prediction Center and the National Weather Service in Memphis showing no hazardous weather to expect in the Mid-South, so good news on that. Big difference in temperatures, especially as we get into later on this afternoon. Temperatures by this afternoon will be back into around the lower 70s to upper 60s in northeast Arkansas, back to around the mid-80s by the time we hit Tupelo into this afternoon. Chances of rain, again, greatest as we head into into around early this morning, crossing the Mississippi River by about midday, and then heading away from us and out of the picture by the time we get into later on tonight. So there really is not a great deal of chances of rain or thunderstorms out there, but they are still going to be possible out there. And here's the other thing, low temperatures tomorrow morning are going to be very low, back into the mid to lower 40s in parts of the Mid-South. Now combine that with wind speeds tomorrow morning out of the north at approximately, say, 5 to 10 miles an hour. That's going to be very uncomfortable waiting for the school bus, so the kids may want to have something in the way of a jacket because wind chills. Finally, starting to time to start talking about those again. We'll be back in the lower to mid 40s and high temperatures tomorrow on Monday. Clearing skies, upper 60s, even some mid 60s from Jackson back to around Union City. So some very nice conditions out across much of the Mid-South over the next few days. Once again, Storm Prediction Center showing severe weather up around the Great Lakes. Not a threat for us at this time, but we will be looking for, again, the potential of some more showers and thunderstorms out there, but just really not that much uh, in the way of problems. The green area shows again the potential for thunderstorms out there. The area in and around portions of the Great Lakes is just not showing anything 
uh, for us, even close to us, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Northwest Virginia hold a possibility of a marginal threat of severe weather. But beyond that, just some thunderstorms possible uh, into and around the area where the green is concerned at this time. Welcome to everybody who's joining us on Periscope and Twitter for this morning. Want to know more about severe weather? Here's where you go to National Weather Service in Memphis. Several training sessions coming up over the next several weeks right into early November. This is severe weather season number two. If you have not lived here before, late October through early December is a time to watch out for strong to severe weather because of the changing patterns of the seasons. And best way to get ready for this is to attend one of these meetings. If you have never done so before, maybe you have never lived here before and you're moving from a place that has little if any severe weather, this is a time to get ready for it and to know what to look for and how to react when this stuff happens. And these meetings can teach you more about what you need to know. Contact information, date, time, location, all this again from the National Weather Service. How do you get there? Go to weather.gov, the homepage of the National Weather Service. Scroll down to the map. Click on the Mid-South. It'll take you directly to the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Memphis. Click on the headline at the top of the page, become a storm spotter, and boom, there you go. As easy as that to give you an idea as to where exactly these meetings will be. There is not one scheduled for Memphis and Shelby County. That'll be coming up in usually late February or around March uh, for anything that goes on around here. But there are plenty of meetings here, and if you can't do it, at any of these meetings, it is available as a training session online. If you want more about that, email me and I'll let you know about that. It's National Grouch Day. I would say Happy National Grouch Day, but that seems to kind of ruin the idea. More on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash WREG. Thanks to everybody for joining us for a Twitter chat for this morning, and thanks to stopping by again for more pictures out there. Beautiful conditions in and around portions of the Mid-South from early on this morning, and if you've got pictures, we'd love to see them. And also don't forget to stop by our Weather Overtime page, which is where this information will be posted coming up a little bit later on today. So tons of information available there. If you'd like to know more about the forecast, go to wreg.com slash weather. Our seven-day forecast is available there. More details available on your forecast throughout the weekend on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network Station. Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And I'll be back online with Bob and Josh early tomorrow morning on Talk Back Live. That'll be on AM 730 or available at www.talkbacklivenetwork.org. Sports chat and so much more. Two hours of that coming up Monday through Friday morning. Great opportunity in the Mid-South to keep updated again on what's going on. Currently again on radar we have showers and maybe some rumbles of thunder developing but we're still not looking at anything in the way of severe weather. Uh, Judy Higgs Edwards felt the quake in Munford, Tennessee. Uh, good to know that. Again, please considering filling out the Did You Feel It Earthquake Report page and you, again you can get there by going to uh, the National uh, the United States Geological Survey. Tons of information available there. Let me see if I can bring that up real quick if you'd like to take a look at that. Again, the Did You Feel It Earthquake page. Great place to let scientists know what you felt, where, when, and how much. And again, you can get there by going to wreg.com slash weather. It's right at the top of the page. Your opportunity to participate in science. You don't need a PhD to participate in a scientific study. This is the best way to do it, and this will really help scientists and seismologists study more about what went on. Again, if you're just tuning in for the end of our netcast, a 3.7 earthquake south, of, south and east of Manila. Manila, Arkansas today. Uh, if you felt it, please tell the USGS and the Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis all about what you felt, where, and when, and that information can help seismologists study more about what's going on where it comes to our very changeable planet. We'll have more details on the forecast and updates on what was felt during the earthquake coming up a little bit later on today. We should be on on News Channel 3 at 5.30, past, NC, or past uh, NFL football coming up later on today. Double header, so we'll be on a little bit late tonight for the late edition. And of course, you can get more information on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, WordPress, YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, and all that available. So stay tuned for more with News Channel 3. Thanks to everybody on Facebook, Twitter, and Periscope for dropping into the show this morning. More coming up throughout the rest of the weekend with News Channel 3 on air and online.